Hi everyone, Tobias White here, and uh, this is the third set of this week's uh, blog. In uh, the prior videos, I showed you how to use color blend modes and how to use uh, brush strokes combined with the FX options in order to create these uh, rather uh, nifty little textures and uh, details that you can add to your compositions. Now, uh, this next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to how to apply uh, overlaying textures over your uh, your compositions or whatever object you're trying to make look uh, more realistic or more interesting and uh, to give it a little bit more uh, of a surface feel so uh, we're gonna go through here and we'll pick some kind of uh, random texture so this is a texture that I actually got from the NASA website great little thing right here and you want to make sure that whenever if you're in CS5 or higher it might be a CS4 too I'm not sure but uh, if you drop it in like that, it's going to be uh, a smart object. You want to go rasterize that because we are going to bend it to, it to our will. Now, we're going to change this to a color blend mode, just like we did with when we were doing the light and shadow. So uh, we're going to go in here, and we're going to cycle through. And if you're a Windows user, you can use your mouse wheel to just go through and uh, select the more interesting uh, effects that you can get uh, looks like fire and uh, and oh I really like overlay often is a big winner and uh, and I really do like this effect right here a hard light that's really interesting too now when you are doing this you want to make sure that you play with the opacity a bit as well and so now what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, bend, bend this texture to our will, quite literally. So you're going to do Control-T or Command-T if you're a Mac user, and uh, we're going to go to Warp here. So you're here, and we're going to curve the texture around our object. Now, uh, this is a great way to go if you're dealing, uh, if you don't have... Uh, CS5 and uh, because CS5 has a nifty tool called Puppet Warp and I'll show you that on the next sphere and uh, but the whole premise of this is that we want to make sure that whatever is coming closest to us is expanding whatever is going away from us is receding and condensing so we can see the difference. That looks flat, that looks round. So now we want to make sure we clean this up. If you've created a mask for whatever you're doing and uh, or have a selection where you can go and clean it up, clean it up. So I just did an inverted selection of my circles and uh, just deleted that amount. Now, I don't want these little stars in. Just don't slap down a layer, uh, a, a, a textured layer, a textured photo over it. Go in and uh, slowly brush it out. Now, if you have CS5 or CS6, you have an opacity toggle right here, and that allows you to lightly remove areas. And I really just don't want those stars that's creating little blue spots so I want to continue that around or I can come around and try to paint in around those areas Now, as well as her erasing, go in there and uh, actually paint on top of this. But I want some of that uh, original work I did before to show through. So I'm lightly erasing it. Then I'm going to do a layer on top of it, a normal painting layer. And I'm going to paint opaquely 
on top of it, grabbing little bits and pieces. And it's kind of like a little marble globe or Star Trek world. I'm going to make that Mars. And it's about giving yourself a, a starting place. So I mean, that kind of looks like, like stratus clouds. And then those... Uh, where the little stratus lines that I created are kind of like uh, you got continents here. And that's interesting. Now we're going to do another layer. And I'm going to show you how to. Here, we're going to use this. I'm going to show you again with right here. I'm going to just. Uh, do this one really quick give you an example now rasterize the layer I'm going to cycle down down not quite like multiply and you know this is it's a different it's a, it's a different uh, light source now multiply, overlay, soft light, those are great for uh, letting everything show through. The other ones like I did this, unpredictable results, but you never know. It might create something interesting and new. You might love it. You might create something even more fantastic. So I bend that to my will. Do an inverse selection. Clean it up. I'm going to soften it just a little bit. And uh, using that Gaussian blur, create a new layer over it and uh, hit it with some highlights. See, I'm coming in here, finding areas I like. And I'm looking for the depth. I'm creating the texture. I'm painting it in. I'm using it as a starting point. I'm not using it as just a fill-in for like a lack of skill. These days and, and times... You know, the faster you can do something, the faster you can produce something of quality, the better. And uh, but there has to be some human part of it. The computer just does not do it for you. And uh, I often get very upset with people that says, "Well, computers do it all for you," and it's far from the truth. Computers are your tools. It's just another medium. Don't let it do the work. If you try to let it do the work for you, uh, you're not going to have good results. And I could really push that even further, but I think that looks really neat. And uh, I'm going to show you, uh, just because of time constraints, I'm going to show you how uh, Puppet Warp works. So we're going to find a texture. Let's do something really uh, interesting looking here. How about one of these uh, marble uh, textures? So we're going to lay that over there.
rasterize the layer. Let's do an overlay. Or you mean soft light? Hmm. It's lighter. That looks interesting. All right, so now uh, this is for CS5, and uh, it's called Puppet Warp Tool. So that was under Edit, and it's Puppet Warp. And so uh, you get this grid here thing, but you want to hide that. So you're going to do the Control H or Command H, put a whole bunch of pins in the areas that you don't want to move. And then you're going to take uh, the edges. of your texture and pull it in and then from out here you're going to push out to condense it to the edges because the edges, the edge of the sphere is receding away from us so we want it to make it look like that hit and enter and so that was before, and this is after. And so it, it's a minor adjustment, but that sometimes that little bit, it helps a lot. So I'm going to go clean this up. And uh, there we go. And I, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed the video, and I hope you uh, learned something that you could possibly use in your own art, uh, digital art painting. And... Um, that's the end of the video. Hope you liked it.